This tutorial will explore what happens after you have a prototype you're happy with and you'd like to hand off to a developer as seamlessly as possible. This is Coding with Seth. Let's see what we'll be building. Throughout the series, we've been building out some of the screens you might see in a mobile banking app. Now it's time to look at how we might get what we've made in Frame a Web into the hands of a developer. These tips will help you hand off to other team members, but they're also helpful if you're the one doing the implementation. First, we'll take a look at the Frame a Web project we've been working on, and we'll take a look at our fresh code base. We'll start with implementing a code component in React and see what changes need to be made. Then we'll look at handoff mode and how we can use this to extract important properties for recreating the components precisely. Next, we'll see how overrides can be integrated into our code project. Finally, we'll take our transitions over to Frame Emotion 2. Let's take a look at what we're working with. Here's a project we've been working on during the series. If you've watched the other tutorials in the series, you'll be familiar with it. Our banking app prototype is looking good and has the core components needed for a minimum viable product. Let's see how we can start migrating what we have here into something that will support an MVP. I've created a new TypeScript React project in Code Sandbox. It's a default project. The only addition is Frame Emotion. This can be added down at the bottom left if it's not there already. We'll create a bar chart.tsx, clear it out, and paste in our component. Code components are relatively easy to move over to our new project. It will work without any changes if we continue to use the Framer API, but we're going to be making a few tweaks in order to get it working with just the Frame Emotion library. The first thing we'll do is remove the import and replace it with import motion from Frame Emotion. We're not going to be using data here. Instead, we expect real data to be coming from an API. Just like in our Framer project, we'll store our utils, get bar height and get bars in a utils.ts file. In a production app, we might expect data for our bar chart to come from an external API. We're going to instead be passing this directly to the component for now. We'll clear out some of the logic that relies on the data API too. I'm going to update the number of bars to series instead. We'll remove the default prop because it's no longer needed. You'll notice we also got rid of add property controls. How are we going to replace that? We're not. Property controls are great for tweaking and frame a web, but we don't need them in our project. There you have it. The component is ready to use in our application. We'll import our bar chart component into our app and pass the series directly to the component as a prop. We'll clean up the references. Let's import it into app and take a look at how we can use handoff to finish it off. You might run into the situation where the component doesn't appear in our preview. This is because it relies on the height and width of the container. So let's give the container a height of 250 pixels. We can fix the TypeScript errors we're seeing here by creating a type definition and typing our props. Let's now move on to another important part of the process. We'll use handoff to see how other components can be recreated. Framer Web gives us the ability to create components in our code through design, but the real flexibility comes with property controls. We'll spend time customizing these components on the canvas but these changes aren't reflected in our code project. This is where handoff comes in. It's a mode we'll use when passing props into our components. Let's take a look at it now. We'll enable handoff mode and select a component we're interested in. With it, we can do a few useful things. The first is view the spacing around the component and how it's placed in the frame. The top section in the properties panel has the JSX for the style object of this component. If we're working with the CSS, the drop down allows us to switch between the two. The bottom section contains the different transitions on the component. Let's say that this is the design we want. All we have to do is pass those same props in. We could directly copy this and override the props we set in app.ts. This is useful for code components we've created, but it works equally as well for design components too. Looking at our send money view in handoff mode, we can select elements on the canvas to see what properties they have so we can recreate them. This is helpful for developers reviewing a design so we can get really close to the original vision while transforming the prototype into real production-ready code. 
let's take a look at the home view of our banking application. Let's recreate these buttons minus the icons in our code project. Let's copy over the base of our component, which is a design component. We'll create a component in our code project called circle button. Import React and create a simple component that exports a div. In our framer project while in handoff mode, let's select one of the buttons. We can see the style definition here, which we can copy over. Click Copy JSX. I'm going to paste this at the top of our component. Now let's use it by passing it into the style prop. We'll fix up our errors by telling TypeScript that circle button is a CSS properties object. We're now going to import the new circle button component. We've seen an error. This is easy to do and I'm showing it here because it's a common scenario. It looks like we've exported the component as the default, but we've imported it as a named import. We can simply remove the default keyword to fix it up. It doesn't look like much, but this will serve as the base for our button animations, which we'll recreate shortly. When we hover over it, we want it to behave the same as in the prototype. The great benefit of Framer's tight API is that it's all based on a small set of core components. The main action buttons under the debit card all have the hover override applied to them. Let's investigate how we can migrate those over too. You'll notice the code override looks very similar to the props you might provide to a frame emotion component. That's because it is. To get the hover interaction working in code, we simply copy over the block. Then we'll import frame emotion and turn our button into motion.div so we can give it animations like the one we're about to provide. We'll transform the syntax a bit to use it in JSX. And there you have it. Taking a look in the preview, hovering over the button with the mouse gives us our hover animation. Now you know how to work with overrides. You could go through each interaction and decide how to work it into your code project. That's all I'll cover on overrides for now. Let's take a look at another piece of the puzzle, transitions. The animations you tweak in Frame a Web, such as the transitions between frames or transitions supplied by property controls, can be tweaked to craft the animation you need, and they can be inspected for their transition properties in handoff mode. We're going to revisit an animated version of our bar chart component. The two major changes we've added is the inclusion of motion.div instead of plain divs so that we can support animation. We've also added the following property control, start transition. The bars are set to stagger animate in and grow from the bottom to give this lively intro effect, but we'll let the consumer of the component determine how the animation should feel with the start transition prop. This can be tweaked in the editor like any other properties. We can choose from an ease or spring animation. Let's take a look at the spring transition settings. With the preview open, let's tweak the properties to give it a bit more bounce. The graph shows how the animation will play over time. Once we get what we're looking for, it's back over to handoff mode. Let's copy over the transition. Let's say we want to support different animations for different scenarios. To keep our options open or to do split testing. We can simply copy over the transition and pass it into our bar chart component. This gives us the flexibility to experiment with how it looks and feels in the real code base and easily update the transition if there are any changes to the design. We can go back and forth between our code project and framer project to tweak the animation how we see fit. Refreshing the preview, you'll see the animation play as expected as the bars expand from left to right across the screen. This concludes handoff from Framer Web to Framer Motion. We've covered migrating code components from Framer Web to a code project, using handoff to copy styles and component props, how to migrate overrides from Framer Web, and finally, tweaking transitions easily with handover. Thanks for watching. I hope this series has given you some insight into how Framer Web can be used to build rich prototypes 
that leverage code for complex interactions and animations that breathe life into designs. You've also seen that what you can make in Frame a Web can be turned into the final product, either by yourself or by a dedicated front end developers. Until next time, this has been Coding with Seth.